Hello and welcome everybody to Elanis Labs. Today, we're going to be doing an in-depth exploration of how OpenCV's minimum and maximum functions operate using a simple array of numbers, and then we're going to use some of that knowledge to create a max RGB filter, essentially converting this picture to this picture. Predator mode. Meh, close, but no cigar. All right, let's kick this off by importing all the libraries we need for this exercise. We're going to be exploring two functions here, cv2.min and cv2.max. In order to get a good grasp of what is actually happening when you use these functions, we're going to work with a simple 3x3 three three array. Now you can see that you have a mode 1 and mode 2, as there are two different ways in which cv2.min and cv2.max works. The first mode lets you identify all the regions of an image, or numbers in an array in our case, that is above or below a certain limit. Let me show you what I mean by that. First, let's make a simple 3x3 three three array. Okay, let's use the first mode of cv2.min. Your inputs for this are the array, which in our case is ARR1, and then you specify the limit below which you want to flag a particular pixel. In our case, it's going to be 100. As you can see in this output, anything that is greater than this 100 has been flowed to 100, and everything that is actually below 100 is clearly visible. This allows you to very quickly identify which areas of the array are actually below 100 by using something like this. Essentially, every area that is false is below 100. cv2.max operates in the exact opposite fashion to this. So let me just bring up the array so that we can see right over here. And if I type cv2.max arr1 and pass in 100, you can see that everything that is greater than 100 still remains to be, whilst everything that is below 100 gets, well, not flowed in this case, but gets set to 100. And that is how mode 1 of cv2.min and max works. Moving on to mode 2. For mode 2, we're going to use two arrays, uh, and these two arrays are going to be the exact opposite of each other. And you'll see in a little bit why I'm doing this once we get into the operation of the mode 2 of cv2 min and max. As you can see, these two arrays are the exact opposite of each other. Now mode 2 of cv2 min and cv2 max works by comparing the two arrays element by element, essentially pixel by pixel, and outputting the min or the max. Now, the good thing about the setup we have over here is that we know that if you were to compare these two arrays and ask for the minimum, for instance, we know that we should get an array that is full of zeros. And if you ask for a max, we should be getting an array that is full of ones. So let's try this out with cv2.min, where I pass in the first array and the second array. As expected, you got a whole bunch of zeros. And if you were to try out cv 2 max ARR21 and ARR22, we should get a whole bunch of ones. So both of them return the outputs that we expected. Now, if you wanted to achieve this same outcome using NumPy, you could use numpy.minimum or numpy.maximum. And there you go, as expected. So that is how mode two of CV2 min and max works. Essentially, it compares two arrays and it gives you the minimum and the maximum. Whilst mode one of cv2.min and cv2.max works by providing an array and a scalar and essentially figuring out which elements fall above and below that provided scalar. All right, now to the fun part. Let's use some of that knowledge that we learned over here to actually build a simple max RGB filter. Our goal is to turn this picture over here into this one over here. What the max RGB filter does is that it looks at the red, green, and blue color channels of the picture, 
figures it out per pixel which one of those has the highest value, i.e. is it the red or the green or the blue that is the maximum, and then floors the losing candidate to zero. And so when you display an image that has been through this filter, you see the strongest color channel per pixel, which is what we have over here. For example, over here in these uh, fields, you can see green is coming out, whereas over here in the ocean, you see blue. And then over here where we have uh, some sort of red roofs, we see red to be the dominant color. Okay, enough talk. Let's go ahead and build this. First, let's import the picture. Now, before we start doing any kind of operations in this picture, let's make sure that we actually get a copy of it so that we have zero impacts to the original image. What we want to do now is to break this picture down into its three color channels. Now, each pixel contains the R, G, and B. So if I were to look at a single pixel over here, you can see the R, G, and B value. However, I want to do this, you know, access every single one of these, but for the entire picture, and then split them out into three different arrays. And we're going to do that by essentially slicing into this array. I'm going to call each one of the color channels uh, that I'm going to extract out of here R, G, and B, just to keep it simple. Now, the first color channel is red, so we're going to put zero over there. The next one is green, and the next one is blue. What I'm essentially saying over here is, okay, NumPy array, give me all the rows you got, so all 426 of them. Give me all the columns you got, all 640 of them, but just give me the first layer, which represents the red color channel. And that's just repeated for green and blue. Now, I want to understand amongst these arrays, which one of them has the max value in an element wise or per pixel level. And for that, I can actually use cv2.max, where I compare two arrays. Now, if you remember, that was the second mode that we were talking about, specifically this one over here. So let's go use that in order to figure out which one of these is dominant per pixel or per element. And I'm going to call this array in which I'm going to store all my maxes, max RGB. First, I'm going to compare just the red and the green channels, so just these two. Then obviously this is going to output an array with the maxes of these two compared. I'm going to take that output and then I'm going to compare it with the remaining channel, which is the blue channel. So just to check that it is the same size. Oops, shape. There we go. It's it's basically got the same number of rows and columns. So now that I have a matrix or an array that describes what are the max numbers when you compare all these color channels, what I want to do is go into each one of these channels and essentially flow anything that is not a max to zero. So the way I'm going to do this, and I'm just going to say for the red color channel, is I'm going to say wherever the red is less than my max RGB value, make sure that element gets equated to zero. And I'm going to repeat the same thing for the green and the blue color channels. Now remember, since R, G, and B, these ones over here, were actually based on RGB image copy, whatever I'm doing over here is going to impact this one over here. That's one of the main reasons why I've decided to make a copy of the original so that the original image doesn't get messed up. So let's go ahead and look at what has been the impact of this code on a single pixel. So I'm going to pick a pixel that is, say, somewhere over here on top of those houses. So let's say it's row number 400 and say column number 500. Hopefully that'll get us on one of these roofs that we have over here. So I'm going to take RGB image copy. Uh, it's row number 400. Whoops. It's row number 400 and column number 500. Okay, so for contrast, I'll also bring up the original image. Let me also bring out the 
max RGB for the same pixel location. Okay, now we can see that the max RGB has identified 149 as the maximum value, which is true when we look at the original image. We can see amongst these three numbers, 149 is the biggest. We've done this operation, which has affected RGB image copy, and what we see is an output, which is 14900. So if you were to walk through the logic, essentially is R 149 less than 149? Nope. It's equal to, but it's not less than. Therefore, it's not equated to zero. It retains its original number. Now, when we go to the green one, which whose original value is 128, 128 is less than 149. Therefore, it gets equal to zero. And the same thing happens to the blue color channel. So that's what's happening at an element or pixel by pixel level. Let's go ahead and see what the actual picture looks like. So if I type plt dot Im show, and I pass in that underscore copy. Voila, we have an image that has been processed through the RGB filter, and it's in fact very close to what we have over here. Just to finish this off, let's actually put a bit of code so that we can have this side by side comparison, just for completeness. All right, and there we go. We have successfully converted this picture into something that's gone through a max RGB filter, giving us something kind of close to predator vision. All right, everybody. Hope you found this video really useful. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button. And if you know anyone that could benefit from this content, share it with them. As always, if you have any questions or feedback, please leave it in the comment section below. Have a good day and I look forward to seeing you on another video.